Hello everyone, I'm LT and I'm with Farhan. And Farhan, where are we at right now? Hey LT, welcome to Bethel Islam Mosque. This is our Ahmadiyya Mosque in Vaughan, Ontario, Maple, Ontario. Um, it's one of the oldest mosques in the area. It was built in 1992, completed in 1992. And there's a little community that we have over here. Um, and we can go inside and check it out. Let's go. Yeah, all right. Let me see if I can get some lights. I like that sign right there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Let me just find out. I think that's the light switch. Okay. Let me see if I can get some more light. Okay. Lit it up. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess it's just like the main lobby area? Main lobby area, a little reception, security desk, um, information. Um, so there's two parts to the mosque. One is the upper floor where we have, uh, actually there's two floors. So there's a mezzanine as well for elderly people. The main floor is here where the men and the kids pray. And then on the bottom, we also have another full-sized same uh, area for women mm -hmm. and ladies. Um, washrooms, of course. Mm -hmm. You have to have those, right? But we have a special washrooms for just doing our ablution or washing up before prayer, the ritual cleansing. Yeah. Um, that's one of the tenets of the song that you have to make sure you're clean before you go inside and pray. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you want to see that or not, but it's a, basically a washing with sinks and... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's very simple. You, we, everyone can just wash up here. Um, there's a procedure that we have from the prophet, uh, the prophet's uh, sunnah. Mm -hmm. Sunnah means basically the way he did things, right? The, yeah. His practices in religion. Um, so we continue his uh, method of worship. We continue his method of um, everything, basically, in life. And uh, the ablution, what do you all wash again during uh, traditional ablution? So you wash your hands, you wash your face, you wash your mouth. Um, you make sure there's no you know, dirt or anything on your... All the way up to your elbows, right? Mm -hmm. and even your feet, you make sure that they're clean. Um, make sure there's nothing in your hair and your beard and everything like that. Yeah. So it's, it's making sure that, because it's a, it's a group setting, right? Yeah. So you want to make it comfortable for everybody. And also, it's also symbolic that you're washing away everything of the world and you're coming to God as a clean person. So it's like uh, always renewing yourself. Yeah. Um, in Islam, you're actually meant to do this often. It doesn't have to be just for the prayer service. Um, it's encouraged to keep yourself in the state of purity throughout the day. So uh, with that, whenever you want to, you can do your evolution and um, it's, it's uh, valued. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to go in there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually, so this is what he was talking about. Um, November 22. And that's a... So they're doing a uh, we're doing a conference at our um, AMSO. We have a students association at York University. It's not far from here, about 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So they're organizing this event on um, November 22. But they're saying that they might have a stall there today, today as well. So I've asked the organizers if they do have a stall. If anything, we can check that out as well. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, that'd be cool. All right. So let's go inside. We'll just put our shoes here. <coughs> Almost tripped my, over yeah. myself. <laughs> So prayers happen here five times a day, and each prayer has a different timing depending on sunrise and sunset, mm -hmm. right? um, which is similar to the Jewish tradition. They also have three prayers a day based on sunrise and sunset. So uh, we can go and wait for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see if there's lights here as well. Well, that's, this is big and wide open. Yeah. What sort of thought goes into designing a room like this for prayer? Simplicity. No distractions, um, because it's a time to focus, right? Um, mm -hmm. This is where people come in to talk to God, to ask for uh, their needs, to be thankful to Him, you know, to acknowledge everything He's given them. Um, so there's not supposed to be any distractions. It's always a clean, um, especially in our mosque, it's a very clean, um, architecture 
um, but also making sure there's enough space for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. um, our ladies hall, which is on the bottom floor, is the exact same size, and it's also the same thing. Um, and usually when you're praying, you're not looking around, you know? When we pray, we stand, we, we hold our hands like this, and mm -hmm. we're looking down, basically. You're, you're before God, so you have that in your mind that you're, um, He's before you. Um, so with that comes awe, with that comes reverence and respect, and of course, love as well, right? So you're not really looking around anyway. So even if there was architecture, it wouldn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? Because then it was just eye candy, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but usually there's always some sort of Arabic calligraphy. So for example, here we have the kalima. Yeah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That there's no, none worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is his messenger. And then with that, you can add other Quranic verses or uh, things like that, which is also on the sides. Um, what, do you often, what do you display on the TVs normally? So we do have programs in here. We have a lot of classes, we have a lot of um, sessions. So if there's a PowerPoint, they have an IT set up so that they can relay the PowerPoint or the video, whatever they want to show. Um, we actually have a conference coming up, um, I believe later this month. So you know, if, whenever there's a presentation, people are sitting at the back, they can't see the speaker. So we have the camera set up to make sure that everyone can see them upstairs and downstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but usually lessons showing the the person speaking, PowerPoints. It's pretty standard, just to you know, obviously. And people... I guess people will also pray up there on the upper level here. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the challenges that you have is um, you have to make sure that the elderly are accommodated. Mm. Right? They can't always in their older age they can't do all the motions of prayer. Yeah. But you can't also fill this place up with chairs either, <laughs> right? Um, because they're bulky. So we usually keep uh, a significant amount of chairs upstairs and also on the side for those who can't uh, go up there. But mm -hmm. uh, there's also, you know, there's a lot of space here. We've been using this facility since 1992. How I many members can well, fit in here? Or how many people come here on a regular well, basis? It's um, hundreds, like daily you'll have hundreds of people coming in here, right? Because we have five daily prayers, right? So. Mm -hmm. Fajr, which is early in the morning, Zohar, which we're going to have in about a couple of hours. Um, it, just, it just goes row by row by row. You know, it's just packed. It's really mm -hmm. packed. Um, that's why it's good to come early, so you get a good spot in the front, right? <laughs> Be closer to your God. Um, but uh, it, it gets really packed, really quickly, because you never know. For example, today's a weekend, you're not expecting it, kids are at home. Boom, they're here at that time when they're not supposed to be here. <laughs> they're, they're, you, they would normally be at school, yeah. but all of a sudden, it's packed, <laughs> right? Yep. Um, so yeah, it's. I mean, it's a community spot, right? Like you, you grew up in the mosque, you live in the mosque, your whole day revolves around the mosque. You schedule your activities according to the prayer times. You schedule your meals according to the prayer times, especially in Canada. Yeah. Because the times change throughout the year. You have to let the prayer times dictate your life, otherwise you're, you're not going to be able to do anything. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, right now we're having sunset around five o'clock. It's like, you know, it's almost it's already nighttime. Whereas other times of the year, it's later on, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Um, so it's always, in Canada, it's a constant struggle to adjust. Um, it makes it a little bit difficult because you're not really adjusting, mm -hmm. right? To any, you don't have no, any fixed uh, schedule. But um, I guess that's part of the challenge. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Anything uh, else to note in here? Um, if you want, we can check out the ladies' hall. Okay. We, there's a section for kids as well there. Um, I mean, it's a very simple, simple philosophy. You, you come here for praying, that's it, right? You don't do anything else. Um, you're not supposed to be doing anything unrelated to the worship, right? Um, so we can go through here, to go downstairs. And so I'm assuming also like the prayer traditions and stuff is similar in Ahmadi faith as it is within like Sunni. And, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is, um, Actually, maybe this isn't the best way to get down here. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't come down here this way since I was a child. <laughs> uh, so this actually leads... Yeah, they have something here, but it's okay. We can get through. So similar space, right? Same size, except that we've added a room for children, right? Because they yeah. can get very loud and rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't control them in, during prayer service. So for mothers with small children, they are able to you know, pray in there and let their kids roam free a bit and still pay attention.
to what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in terms of the prayer service, it's the same. Yeah. Um, depending on, I, I don't know how many how much your viewers know, but in Islam there's different mazhabs, meaning that there's different uh, ways to practice Islam that are all considered authentic. Yeah. Um, so we, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community does fall within Sunni branch of Islam, um, and the mazhab that we follow is the Hanafi mazhab. And according to that, we're, we're praying the same way as everybody else who is a Hanafi, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if, you know, obviously there's a difference between Hanafi and Shafi or Maliki or the different schools of thought. They have slight differences, uh, nothing significant. So there are Sunnis who wouldn't fall into that school of thought. There are Sunnis that wouldn't fall into other Sunni schools of thought. <laughs> yeah. So, right? Within Sunnism, there are schools of thought. Okay. Right? Uh, it's a bit complicated, but... Because I think for like the average person, when they look at Islam, uh, if they're outside of it, especially, they're like, oh, Sunni and Shia, and that's all they know. That's, that's all they know, they know yeah. Mm -hmm. It's when you get inside, then, you know, if you're looking at a large gathering of Muslims and they're praying together, you won't be able to tell mm -hmm. because you're not trained to tell, right? Um, but if you start looking for minute things, then you'll notice, okay, someone's holding their hands differently, someone's putting their feet differently, someone's, you know, standing up. So, uh, so you're saying, like, when they actually pray, there is actual differences between some of the schools of thought. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It's just in posture though, Yeah. mainly in posture. In terms of what they're saying, it's the same. In terms of what they're thinking, it's the same. Um, you know, the, the prayer is prescribed. The wording is prescribed. Where did the different postures come from or how did they... So the postures, for example, they're all taught by the Prophet, okay? And in early Islam, it's basically you saw the Prophet doing something, like I mentioned, Sunnah, right? Mm -hmm. And then you would just repeat after him, copy him, the way he did it. Um, for the most part of the beginning of Islam, it was all the same. Everyone prayed the same way because he was right before them. They weren't doing their own thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, if you have a prophet, you follow him exactly how he is. But what happened is later on, the Muslim community spread to other places. Mm -hmm. So he had to send representatives to those places. Um, so then they became the source of truth mm -hmm. for those communities. So if there's a slight variation in the way they were doing something or if they understood it a certain way, which other people didn't, that's how these branches started. Okay, right? okay. It's not really a huge thing. I mean, in our tradition, we respect all the different mazhabs, um, their schools of thought, and we see them as a guardians of Islam. Like they made sure that Islam stayed a certain way for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of reverence for all the imams um, that did all that hard work of making sure that authentic Islam stayed as long as it could, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's not really a huge problem. Even within the Sunni world, um, they just basically say that Pick a Muslim and follow it. You're, you'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not a big deal. Um, so it, with that, you know, it's... Uh... And so I know when at the last mosque I was at, yep. when they, uh, the imam was leading prayer in yep. the men's section, because that's where I was, uh, because that's when they were doing the prayers and stuff. When, is there an imam leading prayer in the women's section? No, or? it's the same imam. Same imam, there's, are they watching them on the TV? Actually, or? I've never seen the women pray here, so I don't know if they see them <laughs> on TV or not. Um, but I may, it's possible they see them on TV or they just follow very closely and they know. Okay. Because yeah, it, it is pretty prescribed. You know what to do. Um, each prayer has a certain number of uh, um, actions that are done. Okay. And you know which prayer you're there for, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you know if you have to do two sets or three sets or four sets of um, the whole cycle of motions. And is there a reason why the separation between men and women when praying? Yeah, absolutely. So separation can ha um, be ha can happen in different ways, right? In early Islam, there was no large hall like this. There was no partitions. There was no construction. They were all basically seated in the same area. Um, so the men would go sit in the front and the ladies would sit at the back. Mm. And it was like an invisible barrier type thing, right? Until they actually could put a, barrier, a, a proper barrier. Um, and it just evolved from there. The main thing is that the men should not be focused on ladies and ladies should not be focused on men. Okay. Right? You're there for God. Let's make it mm -hmm. as clean as possible. Um, and you don't want to. You, uh, are, you don't want to uh, cause any problems. You don't want to mess with anyone's uh, worship. Right? Um, and humans have frailties. It can happen. And nobody wants that when they're coming to a sacred place like this. They don't want attention that they're not supposed to be getting at mm -hmm. that point in time. Right? So it's evolved. Um, some places they have it in the same floor. It depends on what you're able to do, right? Like for example, this building we were able to do a basement. So we were able mm -hmm. to give them a full size place. You saw it in our uh, community center, there's no basement there. So over there, what tends to happen is the ladies pray in the gym. Especially when we're packed, 
men will take over the top floor, second floor, and then the ladies will have the whole gym to themselves. Okay. Right? So it all depends on how many people we're expecting, and you know, it, it really varies. Like some Friday uh, prayers, there's a lot of people here, and some prayers, there's not so many. And it all depends on the time of year, right? People are in school, people are at work, it's summertime, they're on vacation. Um, you know, life keeps you tied down. You, yeah. know, you can't always just drive an hour to the mosque and, you know, uh, pray, right? Otherwise, you won't be able to come back to work on time and then you get fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, then you'll spend more time in the prayer <laughs> afterwards. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. It's up to the community that's praying at the mosque to figure out how to do the division. Okay. It doesn't have to be any certain way as long as um, it meets the basic requirements of them not being able to interact. Right? All right. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. So I've seen, you know, um, in some of our mosques, it's one floor and then we have a moving partition. So we can open it up, we can close it. Ladies are on one side, the men are on the other side. And then in this place, we have um, the top floor, the bottom floor. And we try to keep it even, give them equal space as much as possible. Um, especially since the, the kids do come in and they, they get rowdy. I remember I was rowdy, <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't know, you're, you're a child, you're at the mosque, you're just seeing things, so you're running around. You, you it's like an open playland, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get to run around for it. So, um, you know, there's a lot of considerations like that. Um, Anything else? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Yeah. It's good. It's pretty simple. It's not, uh, we've been upgrading since we got here. I remember when we first came, um, had this Moss property, we had these huge TVs here, you know, those big bulky ones, like I think it was projector <laughs> TVs. And then yeah. eventually we moved to slimmer ones and then a better audio system. And um, you see along the walls, there's these uh, jacks for microphone or headphones. Yeah. So we used to have uh, translation services for members who couldn't understand the, the language of the sermon. The sermon, it starts, it can be in Arabic, it can be Urdu or English. Usually we do a mix. So we'll do, the first part is always Arabic, but then we do one portion in uh, in English and then another portion in... Is uh, there a reason for the different languages? Obviously, Arabic is very precious within Islam. Yeah. But is there a reason why you mix in the other ones as well? Just so that everyone understands what's going okay. on. It's basically repeating the same thing in a different okay. way. Right? Um, so because we don't want anyone to be feel left out or not get the information they need, right? Mm -hmm. Or the teaching that they need. Uh, so yeah, we, we have translation services. Uh, we used to have these as a translation service where we would give them headphones and they would plug it into the wall and sit and listen. And now we have wireless devices. Yeah. So we give those to them and they just sit in with their earphones and they listen. Uh, so, you know, it evolves. You, you figure out how to do things better, how to make things easier for the people. Because that's what you know, our teaching is, make religion easier for people. That's what the Prophet taught us. Okay. Don't make it difficult, make it easy. Uh, within the limits, without, yeah. without going outside the bounds, but um, as much as possible. And especially in Canada, you have uh, you know, it's a multicultural society. You have people from every language. We have Arab brothers, Afghan brothers, you know, Somalian brothers and sisters, like everybody. Mm -hmm. When they come to the mosque, you want to make sure that they're able to take away. Um, so you have to put the thought into that. Yeah. yeah. And obviously they can always let us know too. There's always suggestions. We take take a lot of feedback on how to improve our programming and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Unless there's anything else to touch on, we can move uh, on. No, no, that's it. I remember we, <laughs> we actually used to do um, overnight stays here. Oh. When we were little. Uh, they still do it now. I'm just, I'm just remembering my days, right? <laughs> when I used to come here and it's like... A hundred kids here, all rowdy, and they're playing around. <laughs> when, like, how, what age group? Um, so starting from seven up. Okay. Let me just turn the lights off here. So.